Corvids bring subterfuge trickery and a mind game to root in their sinister plots and slippery agilities. Essentially, are the players going to be like this? Wow. Because you are like this. My friend, come to your house. Put bomb under your car and blow you into fucking sky. What do you do? Let's get into it. <laughs> Nimble means you can move regardless of rule. Similar to the Vagabond, your face down plots give an extra hit of damage when attacked in defense. You have a trick action. You're the only faction that can move your tokens around. You have strong crafting, and exposure means players will bet a card to guess what the plot is. So the more unpredictable you are, the more likely it is you'll get some extra cards. Wow. A weakness for Corvids in a game of three or more high reach factions. They're strong against minimum reach factions. So make sure you check out the reach at the back of the rule book. If you're playing as Corvids and your reach just hits that sweet 21, you're probably in for a pretty easy game. All right, let's talk about the maps. My favorite map with Corvids is definitely Lake Map. Being nimble and having that extra card draw constantly is awesome. Mountain and Winter Map give a lot of weight to your snares and the Autumn Map is fine. Now let's see what mischief they can get up to in the woodlands. Birdsong crafting. First up, with plots that are on the board, they're your crafting tokens. Flip a plot. Remember between this and crafting, these are your main scoring engines. Now remember, super important, Corvids score a point for every single upturned plot on the board. So you can really make a big, big point gain in a single turn, which can both make you a huge focus and also sneak by the win. So you don't have to plot every turn, but having plots on the board is definitely a threat. And for your recruit, discard a card and put a Corvid Warrior in every clearing that matches. Okay, in your daylight, you move in battle. Pretty self-explanatory. It should look a little bit like this. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about plotting because that's how you're going to get the points that you need. Flip a bomb and it'll explode everything in the clearing. Flip a snare and enemy pieces can't be placed in or moved from the clearing. Flip an extortion and you steal a card from any faction that is in that clearing with it, as well as draw an extra card in your evening. And a raid's triggered whenever an enemy attacks or destroys a token, resulting in Corvid Warriors in the adjacent clearings. So let's have a look at how to plot and what you might be putting down. You remove a warrior to place a plot. If it's your second plot this turn, you remove two warriors. Third plot, you remove three warriors, etc, etc. And your trick is that unique trait that lets you swap plot tokens. They just both have to be face up or face down. So once we get to evening, we've got one cool thing, which is this exert power, which basically means we can get a daylight action at the cost of drawing cards at the end of the turn. Therefore, lake map, awesome, card draw, exert, four actions per turn, plot four times a turn, who cares, I don't know, run amok, go hard. I see a lot of people interpret Corvids as a mixture between the Eerie and the Woodland Alliance. And while they are an insurgent faction, I think it's better to think of them as a mixture between the Woodland Alliance and the Riverfolk. Because like the Riverfolk, you'll be trying to get allies across the board so that you can make really good friends with them forever. So my first tip is chill, Winston. My second tip is to be a bit unpredictable with your plots because factions are gonna guess, they've got a whole turn to guess, your points are really easy to read on the board, so people are gonna do whatever they can to get those plots off the board. So be unpredictable with what your plots are. Some people like to choose plots randomly, some people like to flip their plot away from where it might be useful and then use a trick action later to put it somewhere where it's better suited. And you'll be able to affect the mind state of the board when you reveal a plot they're not expecting. You know, they'll go, wow. So my second tip is to be a true insurgent. And my final tip is to try to score through battles towards the end of the game, rather than by flipping. Essentially you have to wait for the moment to strike because a lot of other factions are going to be able to police you quite readily. So the best option I find with Corvids is trying to stay with the pack in terms of points, but never get ahead. And while the table is policing another faction, you can maybe flip one plot and then battle the rest of your way to victory. And that's my final tip. Be like a ninja or something. Um, I'll get better at these videos, I promise. And to finish with, here's my favorite cards to craft as Corvids from the base deck and the Exiles and Partisans deck. So I'd love to hear what you think and your thoughts on the Corvids and how you play the Corvids. And is this video more Cheryl Crow or Russell Crow? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you later.